Hello and welcome to another episode of the Startup Operator Roundup. I am Roshan Karyapa and I am Gunjan Saha and together we break down the biggest headlines from India's growing startup ecosystem. If you are a regular listener to our channel then please consider sharing this video with your friends and family and if you are joining us for the first time subscribe to our channel for we talk everything startups we have some fantastic conversations with investors operators and founders and we also talk about the news from the week Last week LinkedIn and Twitter was abuzz with news of IIT placements they are down around 30 to 38% across the country Third wave is left with less than a year's runway so many of your favorite coffee places might be shutting down soon mm. I would hope that doesn't happen uh Ilya Satskavir uh, who is famously known for his part for his uh, developments in open what's his last name again <laughs> Ilya uh Ilya Satskavir started a new company and well it is in the safe super intelligence space and the company is called safe super intelligence inc sound like 100% natural or something <laughs> We've had the founders of Resha Mandi in our podcast some time back and lately it has been in the news that the company is really struggling financially so we'll try to understand what's happening there so a lot of exciting things to talk about and react to so stay with us right till the end again uh, if you haven't already please subscribe to this channel like this video if you like the content and comment leave comments with your opinions on these on our takes let's get started Roshan how was your week how was Mumbai <laughs> Mumbai was awesome uh, we had the Nudge event uh, right uh, what is the Nudge event Nudge brings together the finest minds in banking and insurance okay let's leave the shameless wimo plug aside but uh, yeah, did you watch the match today afghanistan defeated uh, australia uh, no I, but i watched the india versus bangladesh match Yeah uh, so i mean today was awesome so while maxwell was batting i thought it will be a repeat of you know whatever happened earlier uh, right but uh, fantastic stuff go afghanistan yeah let's go how many players do you know from afghanistan there's a rashad guy right that's it rashid rashad Rash- rashid khan ha huh, that's about it the rest of them i mean i have it like in my <laughs> ah. in my heart bhavnao ko samjho bhavnao ko samjho okay <laughs> all right um so an iit kanpur alumnus uh, dheeraj singh he uh, made some disclosures under the rti act and the rti stated that a staggering 38% of iit graduates across all 23 campuses are unemployed iits carry out placements in two phases one in december and the second one between january and june and this situation uh, aviral bhatnagar who is uh, you know founder of a juniorvc.com please check out his profile he says that this situation seems to be as bad as 2008 with placements being a macro look of company expectations most firms aren't expecting growth and therefore not building any capacity 2024 looks quite tough what do you make of this i mean it's such a we're starting with such a downer uh, to begin with i'm But, sure you'll uh, make it sound positive no no I, i'll bring out some optimism in this look i think for sure over the last 5 uh, 10 years we've seen an inflation in terms of tech salaries and uh, you know demand and so on and so forth obviously uh, right but uh, I, i think it's more or less a resizing of these expectations really you know uh, if you talk to companies they'll say that we can't find talent uh, in this market and uh, at the other end i mean you're seeing 30 38% uh, of folks not hired in the in in the iits right so i would say perhaps it is a fantastic time for you know product r&d startups to like look at hiring these uh, folks right and and if you're a student um look I, I, again right i mean i think you have to resize your expectation a little bit um and perhaps reach out uh, to some of these uh, niche uh, companies that uh, may not come to campuses right i mean this was how it was earlier uh before campus p- campus placements became a thing right so uh, i remember 2007 2008 when i graduated it wasn't a great time either i mean that's an understatement because you know you had the global financial crisis happening and uh, it, it was it was a it was a slaughter right i mean there were <laughs> hardly any jobs and whoever got placement offers uh, found out that uh, you know it got rescinded afterwards right it got rolled back and so and stuff so in any case there's always a market for good talent you have to kind of seek these out in good old outbound fashion uh, right so i would say if you are struggling with these uh, reach out to me on linkedin um, and uh, i definitely connect you with the companies that are hiring for sure right so yeah 
Also, I think there's some sort of a mismatch into what do people, you know, the kind of jobs they want to apply for, apply for and the skills required for it. Mm. If you just look at startups, right, instead of sending CVs and all nowadays, people are creating posts on LinkedIn and Twitter saying, hey, I'm a graphic designer. Here is something I made for you. And those yeah. kind of content are getting a lot of reach. Yeah. And also, I think downturns are the phases which really give birth to kick-ass startups. If you yeah. look at the 2008 uh, time frame, there were startups like WhatsApp, Slack, Uber, Airbnb. Yeah. And well, these companies are some of the biggest in their, in their industries. Every startup goes through one or two of these down market cycles, right? I mean, any every significant startup for sure. So, it I mean, it's just a nature of the markets for sure, right? What goes up must come down and it will get back up again for sure. Um, so, you bring up an important point, which is that if you are a student, you have to work on proof of work, right? Which is develop your Git profile, um, right? Pick up uh, side projects, side hustles, so on and so forth. Trust me, there is plenty of work out there. There's just plenty of out work out there, but it's not served on a platter anymore, right? So, yeah, all the best. But something really interesting to note here is that even though job markets are tough right now, the population of Indians with income greater than $10,000, that has been steadily growing, mm. right? Uh, right now, we are seeing the whole wealth effect where, um, you know, you're investing in stocks and year over year, it's increasing. There comes a time where you think you have enough wealth that your spending goes up. So with this entire discretionary spending is going up, which is leading to a boom in the middle class population yeah. in India as well. Yeah. No, the top five, top 10% in India are having a grand time. That much I can tell you, right? I mean, people cry about taxes all the time and, you know, we may see <laughs> some increase on that front, I suppose. But uh, uh, it's, it's a fantastic, fantastic time to be middle class or upper middle class in India, for sure, hmm. right? Um, I mean, just look at the quality of services, man. I mean, it doesn't even compare to, uh, you know, folks in the US, right? I mean, where they can't afford services, they can't order out, um, you know, plenty of things, right? So we're living at a fantastic time in India if you're middle class, upper middle class, for sure, right? Uh, someone should look at the graph of discretionary income rising, right? And, and also spending proportionately to that, right? The, I think that's going to create a market in itself. In fact, we're seeing plenty of folks, uh, you know, cater to that market for sure, right? So a lot of these uh, businesses wouldn't have exi existed in, uh, let's say, our father's generation, right? Uh, you know, for us, paying 50, 100, 200 bucks for convenience is absolutely nothing, right? But they wouldn't think of it the same way, right? So uh, the, the whole breed of products and services catering to this is only going to increase. Yeah, I mean, the number of Indian-made whiskeys and gin that yeah. you're seeing, we are targeting this. The rise of Zomato Gold, yeah. subscriptions, uh, Nike, Audi, BMW. I mean, things are pretty evident. Yeah. But unlike, uh, even though discretionary spending is going up, uh, third wave is left with less than a year's runway. <laughs> uh, there was a report by the cap table saying that third wave only has three months of runway left uh, from last year's fundraise. Uh, this is due to its rapid expansions and currently about 70% of its outlets are operating at a loss. This has led to a lot of layoff, layoffs last year. Now, if you compare this to its closest competitor, which is Blue Tokai, Blue Tokai is also spending around 160 crore rupees to earn just 130 crores. Whereas third wave's unit economics to earn 160 crore rupees in revenue, they are spending 200 crore rupees. Mm. So why do you think that is the case? I mean, we are seeing... A lot of new coffee chains open up, but why is it not a very sustainable business? So, two points, right? I mean, I theorized sometime back that this cafe model of business doesn't exist in India. You know, you can't serve someone coffee for 250 or 400 bucks of average order value and expect that the guy will leave, right? He's going to sit there for a couple of hours, two or three hours. And if you add up all of your utilities, the cost of servicing, real estate and so on and so forth, uh, making like 300, 400 bucks out of this person for three hours is just not viable absolutely not viable okay um, third wave is not known to be like you know a fantastic place for like food right uh, even their coffees are mid at best right i mean it's not like a boutique like niche coffee type of uh, place like like arco or something right so so it's tough man i mean you can't serve stuff for like 300 400 bucks uh, you know average order value you, it doesn't happen and to complicate things further they expanded like crazy, right? So wherever you see a Starbucks, you see a third wave as well uh, adjoining. Now, you know, 100 plus outlets, uh, if I'm not mistaken, right? I mean, came up in what, the last two years? 
two, three years, right? So that's crazy. I mean, it's an insane stress on the balance sheet, right? Which means that, you know, your each uh, center has to get profitable within a certain period of time, has to ramp up and so on, for which you have to spend on marketing, right? Whereas, I mean, it, it's not a software business, right? I mean, you can't scale that uh, quickly, uh, you know. Uh, Starbucks itself is, I mean, what is it, 15, 20 or 25 year old story, right? And in even the US, older than that. even older than that, I suppose, right? So US, there is this whole takeout culture. I mean, you know, you step out on the streets in the morning and you will see like huge lines of people standing outside these coffee places like Phil's or Starbucks or whatever, uh, just to take their coffee and go, right? I mean, but here... It's, it's more not like you the case. Go there, open your laptop, chill. Yeah, exactly. That that also happens. But then this takeout culture is a lot more prevalent there. So you'll have like 20, 30 people, maybe 40, 50 people uh, it, at queues who will take it and leave, right? And and of course, in the US, you don't have the equivalent of our filter coffee, right? Which is the most value for money thing uh, in India. Absolutely, right? For 20 bucks, you have fantastic coffee, um, right? And, you know... Uh, 10 years back, that was about 10 rupees. It's gone up only like two times, right? So it's 20 bucks. Unless right you're now. ordering from Rameshwaram Cafe, then it's 90 bucks. <laughs> what, for a coffee? Yeah, on Zomato, Rameshwaram coffee costs 90 bucks. For how many cups? One cup. Jeez, really? <laughs> yeah. Good so I was God. trying to order yesterday uh, for, for breakfast. And uh-huh. I was like, hey, it's okay, I'll make coffee at home. I think that includes like 50 bucks, 60 bucks delivery charge and whatnot, I think. No, that is separate. Are you serious? One... Um, Garlic gyros dosa from Rameshwaram Cafe on Zomato is one ninety bucks, and one coffee is ninety bucks. Jeez, man! I think it. On top of that, you have your platform fee, you have your service charges, you have your delivery fee. Life is hard, huh, Gunjan? <laughs> but see, Rameshwaram is a great example. Okay, it's a great example of like figuring out the target segment. You know mm. that niche, basically, yeah. right? They figured out this niche of uh, premium darshanis. Right, mm-hmm. and after that, I think there are plenty that have started. Amudam has started, and this a lot of these QSR breakfast places yeah. in Bangalore yeah. have followed the Rameshwaram, model, Rameshwaram, which is very simple. Overload. It's on awesome. Feet, a plate of no, no, but a plate of idli would earlier cost you about twenty bucks, mm-hmm. right? I mean, the same plate of idli with some ghee and like masala, whatever, and bucks. you know, garlands adorning the outlet, it'll get you like hundred bucks. But fen- the food is good. Right? Let's not dunk on Rameshwaram like, you know, all the rest yeah, of I them mean, have yeah, been. It's, it's good. It's tasty. The food is good. Uh, even though I am like a native, I will probably vouch for them. Uh, right? Ooh. Yeah. If I'm a native, I'll vouch for them. That's, I mean, that's a good testament. But see, the important point in all of this is to figure out the target segment, that niche and really go after that. You know, premiumization works, man. Absolutely works. I think people can always pay more money for stuff. Uh, so that's another thing to learn from this entire thing. Um, right. But yeah, uh, sad for third wave. I hope they figure a way to uh, steer the ship in the right direction and get back upon their feet. Hmm. Okay. Talking about steering things in a <laughs> different way. Uh, Ilya Satskavir has started a new company called Safe Super Intelligence Inc., uh, this is the world's straight shot SSI lab, which has only one goal and one product, which is a safe super intelligence. Now, this is a new word that you know I'm hearing after AGI or what's it? What, what's AGI? Artific- Artificial, Artificial General, General Intelligence. Intelligence, right? I think it's a bit ironic that we are calling something super safe intelligence when we really have no idea what is an unsafe intelligence. Right? On Twitter and all forums, you'll hear this whole Terminator type doomsday kind of AI. But for me, the biggest problem with AI is that what if AI becomes so integrated with our lives that they can start making transactions without us actually approving it? Yeah. So imagine the AI deciding whether to order your 90 bucks coffee or not, right? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. No, like so these are the real problems, right? So I mean, what is the entire... Co- I'm not able to understand this entire concept of super safe intelligence it sounds a little uh, i mean i don't want to use the word but uh, it, it sounds a little scammy right i mean when you say 100 percent natural you know for sure that <laughs> it's not 100 percent natural right i mean they're going to shove something in there uh-huh. that you know escapes the regulation or whatever or when they say you know only yeah. ata or something of that sort and you figure like you know it's probably the, like a brand name or something mm. hey come in there are no tomatoes and tomato sauce with that <laughs> what yeah yeah. Really? Yeah, th- there's this dude on uh, Twitter and Instagram, right? I mean, he... Food Pharma. Ah, yeah. So, he, he proved that as well, right? So, 
crazy no tomato and tomato sauce so yeah, but, i mean before we go on that tangent right super safe intelligence i don't know man i mean the name sounds interesting but look i mean i think it, this was on expected lines right i mean the, there was this whole boardroom saga that happened with ilya and the rest of them trying to vote uh, uh, sam altman out and then sam altman came back and then the power dynamic shifted and then ilya left and obviously he was not going to sit around twiddling his thumb right i mean I, and also imagine the number of vcs like, <laughs> like lining up outside his door right like build anything build anything will give you something right so uh, so yeah th- i i guess this is the case of like you know someone who's really talented has the experience has built shit uh, deciding to do something in the space that's about it right we don't know what is what at this point i think there's just like one website right now which claims all tall which things. is like hiring but the hiring link does not work really yeah so careers at something like that i saw it on twitter all right ilya if you're listening to this uh, you know fix your hiring like page. share subscribe to this channel also <laughs> subscribe <laughs> yeah but let's see let's see let's see what happens this ai story right this is very similar to the gartner hype cycle i think we are really reaching that peak of excitement from where we are really going to go down and then start off on the meaningful stuff i mean because look up look about it we had the when open ai released gpt there was a chatbot phase then we moved on to ai agents then the entire conversation shifted towards agi and now we're going to pivoting on see i'll grant you that you know some real absolute killer use cases have not yet emerged okay but still there's a lot of like core work that's going into it right i mean look you are young enough that you don't realize like this whole dot com craze that happened where mm-hmm. you know people basically bought some weird domain name and like they were valued at some 100 mil or something like that right crazy you had webvan pets pets com so on and so forth like lo- losing money hand over fist like forget about losing money they didn't even have a business as such right just buy the domain um, yeah a lot of them you know and a lo- there was this craze in india of like you know adding infotech to your company right i mean let's say you were some abc company or whatever you you oh. became abc infotech uh private limited you know mm. so there's 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 always those kind of things but i feel like look i mean nvidia are still selling chips right they came out with this h1 or whatever and and you know that that's like flying off the shelves the demand for gpus is like super strong right and people are still tr- tinkering around and people are building uh, you know real stuff right so whether it is dot com or crypto i mean think about crypto man there were so many of these like bloody meme coins that again just for shits and giggles they made money right i mean at least it's not like that so i do feel like you know killer use cases will take time to develop but this is real yeah okay so then will you say that all of the ai or whatever generative ai things which are seeing today they are all just fancy wrappers over core features a lot I mean, of we have are... this meme right uh, you shared on whatsapp uh, folks take a look at it listen arjun this universe is just a wrapper around me <laughs> this is like uh, krishna is having a dream and we are all figments of his imagination maya right i mean <laughs> dream true maya actually yeah who knows where this will all go and end up hmm. so is yeah. this a simulation or people are going to build like wrappers around stuff right i mean that's just how it is people work on platform inf- infrastructure people work on wrappers applications so on and so, off, so forth on top of these that's that's just how it is in any market on any technology right so so it's it's good i mean not everyone will go out and build an llm hmm. uh, right so there are the llms and there are those who kind of leverage these to build uh, stuff around it right so i i would only say the the pace at which it's it's developing at this point of time if you're a rapper i mean you have to really build a differentiation because just the next upgrade of the technology might make your uh, you know value commoditized right so so who knows you guys should check out the recent video by mkb hd he did a very interesting he gave his own opinion on this thing called is ai a product or a feature i think you should definitely check that video out coming closer home uh, resha mandi is caught in a financial crisis uh, their bank accounts are frozen there are delays in debt payments and there are legal challenges mounting up which is threatening its survival i guess there's another company that comes to mind when you think of these points please let's not mention them Okay so uh, for folks who don't know uh, Resha Mandi is a B2B silk products marketplace it has been struggling with delays in debt payments uh, amid difficulties in fundraising since the middle of last year the company has asked some of its employees to sign new offer letters from an entity called Genzer 
The salaries of some employees were settled through the Genzer account and Risha Mandi's outstanding salaries are listed as a joining bonus in Genzer. This has led to employees filing complaints with the police, which ultimately led to the settlement in their salaries. But this is not only, you know, this kind of trouble is not only restricted to Resha Mandi. A 2023 Agri-Foodtech investment report by Ag Funder and Omnivore highlighted that 33% drop has been seen in venture capital funding for Agri-Tech and Foodtech startups in 2022, with total funding falling to less than $2.4 billion. This sector has mostly been relying on government support amid strict official controls. Mm. So really not a very lucrative space to be in. Yeah, it's a very complicated ecosystem, right? The supply chain is super, super complex. Uh, the premise of Resha Mandi's value was that we're going to streamline this sericulture um, e- ecosystem, right? So they would procure uh, from farmers, they would, uh, you know, supply it to, uh, you know, garment creators and, and so on and so forth, right? So a classic vertical marketplace, uh, that uh, layered marketplace along with software and financing, uh, very, very, very complicated, man, super complicated business, right? Uh, and I think in three or four years of uh, founding, they had already t- touched, I think, about 2,000 crores of revenue and so on, gross. The challenge with this business also is that the credit cycles that they have to offer to these guys, right, um, is really tough, right? It's it's very, very tough. So like they say, you know, revenue is vanity, profit is sanity, and then cash is reality, you know. Um, <laughs> it's It's hard. It's really, really hard to manage this business. Uh, I only hope that Mayank and uh, his team are able to get out of this mess that they've gotten into. I, I really do feel that these marketplaces have huge potential, for sure. Right, And we're seeing that. I mean, we're seeing off-business, for example, execute really, really well. So uh, there is definitely value in this. It's just really complicated. All right. So, Roshan, those are some really interesting you know, insights into some of the headlines. That the we... roundup has been a bit of a downer this time. Right? I think we need to like amp it up a little bit. Why don't you bring us some cheerful news, some optimism? All right, let's talk about the fundraisers from last week. And yes. they, we have seen some big check sizes. Yeah. Uh, leading the pack was Zepto that raised $665 million from Avenir, Lightspeed, Avra, Gladebook and others. And they raised at a valuation of $3.6 billion. Nice. Uh, Alive Health, which is a rapidly expanding health tech platform in India, secured $5.5 million in Series A round which was led by Axelor Ventures with participation from One Crowd Fund and InHealth Ventures. The Pant Project, which is a D2C brand, raised $4.25 million from Sorin Investments, MGA Ventures, Huddle, Dexter Ventures and other angel investors. And last but not the least, and I think this is going to be my favorite one, Beera 91, which is the craft beer manufacturer, they raised $25 million from Kirin Holdings in Singapore. So mm. I think tonight we're going to have a Beera beer. But Zepto and Alive Health, those seem interesting. Yeah, very interesting. By the way, the Zepto founders are still 19. <laughs> we don't know, right? We have to check some of the yeah. news portals online. Yeah. But uh, look, I think they're painting this as a bigger opportunity than Amazon and Flipkart, uh, right? And there's definitely some distance to go on that. We spoke about how people don't mind paying for convenience and discretionary income and spending is rising uh, and so on, right? This just feeds into that. You know, once you go Zepto, it becomes a bit of a habit, right? I myself, I use Instamart um, because I don't want to, you know, download another app or whatever, but I'll try Zepto out. Competing against the Kirana traditionally has been really, really tough, okay? But uh, Zepto has made good progress. At least they've achieved decent adoption, um, I would say, right? And again, I don't understand the business economics of this, uh, right? On how you can make money of uh, 300, 400... Uh, rupee average order I, 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 and the margins are razor razor thin um, right and there's only so many of your own cell phone brands that uh, you can run and so on and so forth um, but let's see let's see Zepto guys have also been raising funds at an annual basis like once they're averaging one fund is every year mm. and sometimes it's even two fundraisers this year, is right? just and a business that big... requires a lot of cash, right? I mean, so, uh, what I heard was that they want to plan for an IPO and they need enough money in the bank for that and so on and so forth. Uh, I don't know, man. I really don't understand. I can't wrap my head around like either the unit economics of this mm-hmm. or, you know, how they're going to scale this beyond like, let's say, the 30, 40, 50 million people who actually will, you know, subscribe to something like this, 
right? Uh, you know, if you told me in 2010 uh, that, uh, you know, Flipkart will have 100 million users or so on, I don't know. I wouldn't have, like, said, uh, you know, it'll happen, right? I mean, because it, it just was crazy at the time that, you know, someone will order stuff online, pay and all of that stuff. But somehow we've gotten there, right? We have, like, maybe 100 million people ordering on these e-commerce platforms, Right. And today, if you tell me, like, in another 10 years, Zepto will achieve that kind of scale, I, I don't know, really. I don't know if we'll get 100, 150 million people who will order grocery, uh, you know, from the app, right? I mean, in the case of Flipkart, I mean, it was, they didn't have to, dis they didn't have to displace a habit, mm -hmm. right? But here, I mean, it's so well entrenched, right? Like, my mom will never order from Zepto. Perhaps she's not the TG as well, right? But everyone has that one, you know, uh, uh, Kirana, one or two Kiranas right next to you that will have everything, right? Yeah. So, I don't know. I, I suppose it's a, it's a, there is a TG that they're looking at. Now, the only question is, is it scalable enough? Is it like big enough? Is it worth and is it 4 billion dollars? Exactly. Is it worth that, right? I mean, is it wor profitable enough? Um, but it's good that all of these folks are looking at the IPO market. So, let's see. But amazing, man. I mean, like the, ambition right these guys have and the vision they have is hmm. like you really have to give props for that right i mean um, such young guys but uh, seems like you know they're here to make a difference for sure it'll be interesting to see how much of the company they own also if they're raising at such yeah, big valuation now it'll be down to single digits huh, i right. think Reminds probably me of the dunzo story what about it they raised like huge chunks of money from reliance google and whatnot and i think the founders in total, they were left with less than 7% of the company. Yeah, that, that happens. After you raise three or four rounds, especially, I mean, that to that mammoth rounds, I mean, it, it does happen, right? Um, but Bira is another interesting thing, right? I think they, I, for, a, for a brief time, I think they just disappeared, right? Uh, it was super popular about, uh, you know, I would say seven, 19. eight years back. Super duper popular, but since then, I mean, I don't see them on the shelves as much. You know, they had some problems as well. Because you're more on the whiskey section. <laughs> that too but then uh, uh, yeah I mean it's, it's a again it's one of those really tough businesses right I mean the government charges more than a pretty penny on uh, beer and alcohol in general right the taxes are crazy crazy high so you're left with very little but uh, let's hope uh, that you know they're able to scale Bira. Okay. Uh, there's another one right An, a new company in the Axelor portfolio Alive Health Hmm. This health tech platform space in India is also really, really yeah. growing. Alive is an interesting uh, business. Uh, you know, Shashank and his co-founder are from the domain itself, uh, right? They were consultants before this and they've built a very capital efficient business, uh, right? So again, such a contrast from everything that we've been speaking about, right? So there are, are like good profitable businesses that can be built in India in very much contrast of like go big, go broke kind of businesses, right? So, um, they wants to watch out for, for sure. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Let's see what are some of the interesting tweets we could find for you from the last week. We have James Hawkins who, you know, tweets. He died doing what he loved. Shifting paradigms across scalable B2B SaaS and picking low-hanging fruits with seamless integrations for key stakeholders. No, honestly, when you send this tweet to me, I could not know what sense to make of it. Oh, <laughs> but man. then later, oh, wow, this is sarcasm. Dude, I, I thought people. it was hilarious. <laughs> I just thought it was super, super hilarious. Um, right? Look, I mean, it, it's like, I don't know, man. People keep dunking on B2B SaaS folks, right? Like it's some boring shit. Hmm. Uh, it may be boring, yeah. But, you know, important thing is to die doing what you love. So, if you have to die, yeah. So Jason Lemkin uh, posted a tweet listing down the companies that are in the 1 to 2x uh, ARR club. Uh, some of the companies he listed are Amplitude, Zoom, Sprinkler, PayPal. What is this? Like, what is this 1x to 2x? See, this uh, is club? basically showing that the US public markets right now is dog shit on valuations. <laughs> I mean, seriously, right? I mean, PayPal being valued at, uh, you know, 1.5x or something is mm. crazy, right? Um, it's ridiculous. I mean, an equivalent of that company at a tenth of that revenue will list at crazy valuations in India, right? Yeah. We saw the kind of subscription that Exigo had, uh, you know, a week back, 100x 98. subscribed and so on, yeah, right? Almost 100x. So there is a huge appetite in the Indian public markets for 
something tech right so really i mean the the opportunity is for the next 40 50 60 of these companies to go and list in uh, india for sure well yeah. one company that has been having a very different kind of problem in the us is nvidia <laughs> stock prices have risen so much that yeah. many of the they doubled this year right yeah many of the engineers who had stock options 4 5 years back i mean they are considering to retire because their stock values are what probably 50 60 million dollars and even at 10 to 20 million, million right? right i mean even at 10 to 20 million it's a it's 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 that kind of wealth where you can reevaluate your priorities yeah. in life you know i mean 10 to 20 million in the us right mm. but imagine that these people mean, like these engineers decide to quit they yeah. actually decide to quit it's going to be tough man i mean a lot of these folks who made enough money right i mean why why will someone like still like put in the you know 12 hour work day as such right i mean a lot of these folks are going to reevaluate shit another interesting video that we came across on twitter is trump saying i promise to staple a green card to anyone who graduates from any college even two year community college so i think this is good news for all the <laughs> visa holders in the so US. Trump was on the all in pod I'm yet to t- check out that uh, podcast I just saw snippets of it yeah let's play really that snippet yeah. Yeah. play that snippet I've never heard you talk about this can you please promise us you will give us more ability to import the best and brightest around the world to America I do promise but I happen to agree that's why I promise otherwise I wouldn't promise let me just tell you that it's so sad when we lose people from Harvard MIT from the greatest schools and lesser schools that are phenomenal schools also and what i wanted to do and i would have done this but then we had to solve the covid problem because that came in and you know sort of dominated for a little while as you perhaps know but what i want to do and what i will do is you graduate from a college i think you should get automatically as part of your diploma a green card to be able to stay in this country and that includes junior oh. colleges too Oh, this is very like, amazing. stark difference from Trump in 2018 time. No, uh, look, uh, you know, for all his ills, right? I think Trump is pretty logical, right? Mm-hmm. Very, very logical on some of these things. I mean, he had the right instincts about China, for example, uh, right? Um, and, and I mean, the whole mess in Ukraine as well, right? So, I, I think this is awesome news for the U.S. <laughs> but it might not be the best news for india right i mean we're already suffering from uh, you know our best and brightest folks leaving the country to do things in the us and so on right but uh, look i've had friends in the us who've had to wait 10 15 years to get a green card and these are folks with a masters in uh, engineering who work at like amazing companies like facebook or you know apple or google and stuff like that right it makes absolutely no sense especially given the fact that you know people are just like crossing the borders at this point right so the us had a very different immigration policy in the 60s 70s 80s right i mean they used to kind of look at it as a talent hub mm-hmm. you know you come in with your degrees you come in with your talent and hard work and you can build a phenomenal life out here in the us right it was that but today it's become kind of a charity case right i mean you have all kinds of people getting into the border and it's not perhaps politically right, right to talk about it but these folks are not going to add to the you know economy the society the culture or what not right i mean sure if you want to look at it as some kind of charity or whatever there are multiple reports and studies that show that give the money to folks in their homeland right it's way more economical it's way more effective as well uh, rather than you know inviting them to your country and like trying to uh, you know uh, trying to integrate them into your society and so on right it's it's very very difficult so i think this is the right attitude to have from a country perspective which is that <coughs> if you are a talented person and you're willing to work hard then this is the country for you uh, right look i mean us they sold the dream so well that uh, you know i mean you, you look at whether it is nasa or silicon valley or any of the other tech stuff right i mean from motels to doctors to tech right i mean in- indians have been the backbone of the the growth in uh, uh, in the us right so so this is great news for us uh, <laughs> not so much for india in some sense yeah it was also means the us cricket team is going to get stronger <laughs> <laughs> yeah maybe you'll find a few more oracle engineers opening the bowling all right so um, those were some of the most interesting things we found on twitter 
if you found something else do let us know in the comments below we'd love to go share through. your memes with us yeah share your memes you never start off starved of memes yeah absolutely all right folks who stayed with us right till the end thank you so much please like this video if you enjoyed this conversation and share your opinions with us uh stay tuned on our social media platforms for upcoming conversations and interviews we'll be back again with more exciting headlines next week till then take care have a great week bye guys cheers